good afternoon everyone good afternoon good evening hello from delhi thank you for uh, giving me this opportunity to talk about um, this subject so i'm basically uh, going to talk about the popular culture popular visual culture of south asian islam south asian muslims uh, specifically uh, looking at the transformation of uh, kaaba the shrine in mecca uh, through uh, more than a century i guess uh, so uh, this is a subject that very little work has been done on this and i'm going to show you a whole lot of images um, so basically when we are talking about the popular art or popular visual culture of south asian islam we have uh, rather inexpensively produced uh, images religious images that one can find being sold uh, in the shops uh, around uh, shrines about around sufi shrines about around mosques what i'm showing you uh, just a couple of images of the market where uh, these objects are uh, sold but these are sort of modern uh, very plastic kind of versions uh, which are available but i'm going to go back into history and and start with where did the images of mecca and medina and kaaba come from before uh, the printing press started of course uh, we have to see uh, how did the images of mecca or kaaba come into south asia because i'm going to focus mostly on south asia looking at uh, the historical uh, development of these images one realizes that one of the first kind of images that were available were the uh, hajj uh, uh, certificates or hajj scrolls that were made uh, in different places like turkey and and egypt and so on hajj scrolls or hajj certificates were given to people who came to perform uh, uh, the pilgrimage not only when you do your own pilgrimage but sometimes uh, they were sort of proxy uh, pilgrimage uh, like if i cannot go to mecca i send somebody uh, to do a hajj on my behalf and that person goes there and gets a certificate that yes this person came here and and uh, conducted uh, the pilgrimage and then you come back so so these uh, hajj pilgrimage uh, certificates were available right from 13 14th century and so on so uh, and and many of them are illustrated they have the images of mecca the kaaba uh, apart from that there are also prayer books uh, that were published so the, some of the prayer books were also printed in india not printed but they were they were illustrated they were uh, prepared in india and uh, they also have a kind of a, a, a cartographic representation of what the shrine of mecca looks like so uh, these were uh, we have some samples of that from late 9 late 18th or early 20th century uh, these images uh, some of them are labeled so you can see you know they are they are, they are talking talking about what is with, which gate is this and uh, where is what so that any pilgrim would know uh, where the important uh, um, shrines or important places in in mecca are available and then uh, there are many uh, indian artists or south asian artists who have drawn uh, images of this kind for instance we hear of an artist named fateh mohammed musawwar uh, from rajasthan who has made this picture uh, in 1880 and then there are some hajj scrolls again from north india uh, 18th and 19th century then uh, we also come to know that in the late mogal period court uh, painters or court artists mogal court artists visited uh, mecca and they tried to make uh, some kind of pictures uh, in fact uh, there are families of artists from delhi and lahore who have uh, traveled to mecca and they made pictures uh, of this kind like very very panoramic large sort of pictures uh, of mecca so this uh, particular picture is made by somebody named uh, mohammad abdullah naksha navees of delhi you can see if you look at the details you will find that there are some unique uh, kind of parts in this picture that there is a like a hut uh, which is very typically indian hut and then there are water pots uh, earthen pots kept in that so there are many details like that which make it a very uniquely indian or south asian style uh, of painting and then of course uh, the captions are written in urdu and english so you have this panoramic picture uh, that, that was drawn this is before the printing press so of course around uh, mid 19th century and then there were also 
paintings done on ivory again from from the family members of these uh, uh, mogul uh, court artists uh, this is probably done by somebody called ismail khan and uh, then you have uh, a, a paintings like this uh, this is a painting of madina munawwara uh, made by an artist named abdul basit from rampur uh, around 1876 um then you know people from other places also have come and drawn pictures of this kind so for instance this is a naksha made by umar dagestani obviously from central asia uh, and many of these are uh, kind of pilgrimage maps uh, with captions or labels which tell you uh, which object or which uh, built uh, kind of uh, part of the uh, of the of the of the pilgrimage place is is available where so the anybody who's going for a pilgrimage would have a rough idea of you know where to find what because these things are available mostly in oral history oral memory but it's very difficult to find something like this where you can actually see uh, which part of the uh, pilgrimage place is available um, because you know these images are uh, not available to the masses they are very uh, you know they they have been drawn for specific uh, kind of patrons and then they 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 are limited to them they are, these are not really available so i have always wondered that how are the masses uh, seeing or imagining the picture of uh, of kaaba uh, when the printing press was not available so now we come to the printing press uh, the time of the printing press so you can see i'll just show you the previous one and this one so this is a poster that has been this is probably the first poster produced uh, uh, by a printing press and of course uh, you may have heard of raja ravi verma uh, the uh, indian artist uh, who was not only uh, drawing uh, pictures of uh, hindu gods and goddesses uh, but also started a printing press where those could be printed because uh, he had such a big demand for his for his images and later on uh, he also produced these islamic uh, posters so for instance this one uh, it says at the bottom uh, makka muazzama and ravi verma fine art litho works karla lonavla karla is this sort of hill uh, station near Bum- mumbai where his printing press was uh, uh, made and and many of these images were produced uh, from there Uh, i'm just showing you a little uh, close up of that where you can actually see again labels or or uh, titles of different places apart from mecca he also uh, ravi verma press also produced uh, pictures of madina munawwara and baitul muqaddas in jerusalem and, and many other and then there are other presses also which were producing these kind of uh, pictures the islamic pictures for example there's a, a press in delhi called uh, hemchand bhargav hemchand bhargav was also producing many islamic uh, images now uh, of course we cannot ignore the photography so apart from the printing press the earliest picture uh, photographs that were produced of mecca also come into the picture because you know they are influencing what is being produced in uh, you know through paintings or illustrations so there are many photographers who have uh, reached um, for example this egyptian photographer named sadiq bey Uh, who probably took one of the first uh, photographs of uh, uh, Mecca and Kaaba this is from 1860 uh, so many of these pictures are like large very wide uh, panoramic uh, uh, sort of scenes of the town and one of my propositions uh, through this work or through this pr- presentation is that uh, initially uh, many of these images of Kaaba or Mecca were really large panoramic uh, maps or naqshas uh, and they are sort of informative naqshas they are informative maps which are supposed to help uh, the uh, the the pilgrim and there is very little uh, devotional element in them and i will explain to you how this uh, there the more devotionality is added to them as we go along these are informative uh, maps where which which kind of tell you uh, uh, you know the larger scope of the landscape of mecca of course there are some photographs that were published in indian books also so for instance the begum of bhopal goes for hajj pilgrimage uh, and uh, she has published this her hajj uh, 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 travel log in which at least one picture uh, is there the haram sharif again uh, showing you a, a kind of a, a larger uh, a wider kind of image of the shrine 
And then we have a very important um, image maker from Delhi, in fact, from Chandni Chowk, Delhi. His name is H.A. Uh, Mirza. And H.A. Mirza and company, they were producing a, a large number of picture postcards in India already. And uh, uh, many of them were color po postcards, color uh, or color tinted uh, uh, photographs of Indian uh, uh, sceneries or Indian uh, shrines or Indian places. But then H.A. Uh, Mirza goes to Mecca and uh, takes these photographs. Some of them have been preserved in, in private collections, not all. Um, now, interesting part is that he, H.A. Uh, Mirza, has produced these images, uh, some of these photographs as part of an album where uh, these pictures are, uh, the, the photograph is in the middle and all around there is a border. And on the border, you see a, a whole lot of information. Uh, it not only says Nakshaya Harame Madina Munavara, but it has couplets in Urdu. And on the sides, you have these uh, uh, sort of, commentaries about uh, uh, what you are seeing so they are in, in a very floral kind of a, you know very uh, intricate urdu and they are talking about uh, what happens when you go there it's almost like uh, sometimes it's very emotional and poetic description of what happens to a, a pilgrim who goes to uh, mecca and medina and what all you you witness there and when the azan is called out you know how it, it really brings out the emotion in you and uh, which prayer, which namaz you have to, uh, you, you know, you have to conduct at a certain time. And when you go to from this place to that place. So the entire description of what happens to a pilgrim are, are uh, available in the, on the sides of these albums. I'm just showing you a close up of that, which will give you an idea of how uh, these descriptions are available. And uh, so H.A. Mirza is doing all this, this entire album, um, which has pictures from Naksha Jannatul Mawalla, which is a cemetery, and Naksha Masjid Khaif Wamina, where you go uh, at the day of the Hajj. I'll show you a close-up of that. So this is basically in Mina, where you have the, the entire tent city is, is created. Now... If you look at the bottom uh, left, uh, you see some something written in Urdu. So I'll show you a close-up of that. It says copyright H.A. Mirza and Sons photographers. So copyright is very important because, uh, you know, at this time, uh, almost all these images are being copied by other publishers and they could be plagiarized. So therefore, many of these publishers are, are putting their, the, the name uh, in them. Many of the photographs have captions in Urdu, Arabic and Urdu. It's very interesting. Even when I visited Saudi Arabia, I found that even the signboards or the instructions for the hajis uh, are uh, the, they're given in many languages, but the language which is used most uh, after Arabic and English, it is the Urdu. So many pilgrims go from South Asia, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, even Afghan. So uh, Urdu is one of the most popular languages used at the places of the pilgrimage. So you can see that in this picture, I'll show you a close-up of that. Again, it says, Yaha haji khade hokar huzur, uh, par salat, uh, padte hain. So this is the place where you uh, offer your prayers to the, uh, to the, uh, to the tomb of the Prophet. So, so all these photographs are being produced, but uh, the, the artists that are producing the paintings or the illustrations in India, in South Asia, are not necessarily traveled to Mecca. You know, this photographer definitely went, but what about the artists? Uh, because not all artists are Muslim, first of all, and uh, how do they get the reference? So I'm showing you this photograph and I'll compare it with a uh, calendar picture, uh, which was done in the early, you know, like 1930s uh, or 40s. If you compare these two pictures, you will find that they are exact replica. So uh, the artist probably looked at this photograph and uh, tried to make a color illustration. The only difference that you will find, the photograph obviously has the pilgrims, the human, you know, the people are in it. Whereas the illustration, the, uh, the color uh, painting doesn't have any single person. That is because uh, a large number of Muslims who buy uh, a calendar picture like that uh, or a poster, they do not want human figures drawn. I mean, this is something that has been debated a lot, but a large number of, uh, you know, ordinary people who would buy a poster, they would not 
uh, by uh, the human figure made on a picture. So therefore, uh, the, the artist has taken care of that. But then at the same time, you also find pictures like this, um, where uh, the pilgrims have been drawn by the artist. So the, again, this is labeled and uh, captions about where is what. Um, some of the photographs, calendar images are uh, definitely, again, naksha, and, and they're, they're giving you a large panoramic uh, view of the place. But some are also taking that uh, little symbol, like the, the green dome, and putting it with the backdrop of flowers and decorative elements and some kind of couplet or some Persian couplet. For example, this one on the uh, right, it has a Persian couplet which is uh, sung also by the Kavals uh, in South Asia. Some uh, of these posters are in fact um, kind of pilgrimage maps which are telling you uh, what are the other pilgrimage centers apart from Kaaba. So there is Kaaba, Medina, and then there are Rosas or the, uh, or the tombs of, of various important people, uh, tombs of, let's say, the relatives of the Prophet Muhammad and and then other places because you know uh, a lot of uh, pilgrims go uh, especially the shia pilgrims they they not only visit mecca but they also visit other places uh, in iraq and uh, palestine and so on and so forth so all those pictures all those little little shrines have been drawn in this picture and this has been uh, produced by a publisher named bridge basi who was very prolific in producing islamic uh, prints the idea of these pictures is also that, you know, not everybody is able to go for Hajj pilgrimage. I mean, large number of Indian Muslims uh, or South Asian Muslims uh, cannot afford to go. So many of these images are a kind of an aspiration of the, of the ordinary Muslims who wish to go, but they are unable to go. So they, they are kind of visualizing the desire of a Muslim to, to, to go on the pilgrimage. So, as I said, that the local artists, most of them, they may not have visited. Many of them are not even Muslim. So, for instance, this picture on the left is drawn by K. Madhavan, uh, who is from Tamil Nadu. Uh, there are many other pictures of K. Madhavan, you know, Islamic images. Similarly, the other picture on the right is uh, by Manzoor from uh, Mumbai. And uh, some of the pictures also look at, uh, apart from Mecca and Medina, there is a priority of which other shrines South Asian Muslims would look at. So there is Baitul Muqaddas in Jerusalem and there is Ajmer Sharif, Ajmer, uh, the shrine of the Sufi saint uh, Moinuddin Chishti. These are some of the, let's say, three or four images that you will find in, in many Indian posters produced in India. The Makkah is not only created, uh, you know, made on the poster, but it is also used sometimes in advertisements. So, for example, this is an advertisement of BD or the or the country cigarette, if you are familiar with, uh, with the kind of little cigarettes that are available. So this is an advertisement of that and uh, a Mecca's image has been used because that will help sell the BD. Now we are coming to a point in the 1960s, 70s, 80s, where I believe that so far, you had these panoramic views, which were very informative, which were kind of pilgrimage maps to help the pilgrim. But slowly, uh, we are kind of zooming in to uh, the, these two uh, uh, icons, the, the Kaaba and the Green Dome of Medina, and sort of detaching them from their, uh, from their larger map or topographic format into just an artistic creation. So you have images like this, uh, which have been decorated from, you know, all around with flowers and things like that. And also calligraphy quotations from the from Quran and so on. And we are moving into a style of art in the 1980s and 90s, uh, not 90s much, but 70s, 80s, uh, where this icon of Mecca and Medina is detached from its uh, from its larger uh, geographic uh, a pattern and and put it into a, a kind of a beautiful looking um, picture which is something like what you would do in a Hindu devotional image because many of these artists for example this artist Swaroop or the artist uh, Rastogi uh, Yogen Rastogi was one of the artists they are putting the Mecca and Medina Kaaba uh, into these alcoves or into the uh, arches, which are very, very typically Indian arches. It could 
it could well be you could even put a hindu deity in in, in these alcoves or arches so i think that what has happened over the years how it has transformed is that from that uh, informative image which was available for a pilgrim it is now coming into a more trying to convert the icon of mecca and medina into sort of deities and very very colorful um, sort of style the bazaar art style that you see they would use calligraphy of course uh, they would use the names of god and so on uh, and you can see the artist's name balakrishna is one artist and uh, so so the hindu artists are, are creating these uh, pictures of mecca and medina whereas the muslim artists are also doing you know hindu uh, deities and so on so this this entire industry has this very interesting uh, multi faith kind of character kind of making it a very uh, animated sort of an image a, a image which is actually telling you a story where you have the 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 popular piety of a of a muslim child who's reading the quran mecca medina and then this 786 uh, you know throwing a ray of light on on onto the quran uh, again this picture has been done by a, a hindu artist td pandian and produced by a publisher named jb khanna so you can see uh, that you know there's a very interesting uh, syncretic Uh, element uh, visual element in in many of these images and of course many of these images are being used by muslims as well so uh, and nobody really raises any problem about that apart from mecca and medina you also have the images of the local sufi shrines local saints uh, in south asia whether it's in india or pakistan and again the image of mecca and medina are always superimposed on them so here you can see a very a uh, very very down to earth very very uh, uh, rooted a uh, kind of an image where a, a, a sufi named uh, sayyid lal badshah who looks like a sadhu a hindu sadhu uh, but he is getting uh, a sort of a ray of light uh, from mecca medina i don't know whether he is getting it or he is sending it you can you know it's your interpretation and then this this the the, the lion which which represents the power the spiritual power of the sufi so many of these things are uh, you know the mecca medina is there in in almost all images uh, especially of the sufi saints so here again this is a poster which is showing the meeting of two saints uh, shah badiuddin madar and shah mina uh, again uh, you have the mecca medina on top a very very colorful um, a collage or a montage of of various elements put together in these images it's becoming more and more colorful more and more popular more and more and more bazaar art kind of style sort of buyers who are going to buy these and they are going to put up in their homes and so the artists and the publishers are making sure that these are very very uh, animated and very uh, sort of colorful images of course in calendars apart from the actual picture you also have the brand name and the and the dates and things like that available businesses that are that are working in small towns in in india for example this one uh, it's from miraj and solapur two two small towns in maharashtra and then sivakasi which is a kind of a center of uh, publication center of print and also fireworks and so on so these are places where all these images are being produced and uh, there's a style uh, there's a peculiar artistic style which is being followed in many of these images sometimes they are very plain simple uh, picture with a with a quotation with a for example this couplet uh, persian couplet which talks about how the namaz or the prayer the salah is very important and after your death the first thing that will be asked is whether you prayed or not again done by bridge basi and then this artist uh, swaroop so uh, if you can see the architectural uh, kind of motifs that are used uh, they are very temple like the hindu temple kind of uh, there are windows being created there are arches there are alcoves and in between you have symbols you have quotations or names of the of muhammad and ya allah and and for example this uh, picture on the left uh, rastogi's picture a garland of flowers uh, i mean something that you would expect uh, in a hindu context in a hindu temple you know uh, somebody being garlanded or or you garland a, a deity or an idol i believe that from that point where uh, mecca and medina were just part of a large uh, landscape of the town 
they are slowly becoming uh, objects or rather uh, objects of devotion. And this is happening uh, more so in South Asia and in India. I don't know much. I mean, I have seen pictures of Mecca and Medina in other Islamic countries also, but uh, they have not been uh, decorated and beautified as much as they have been. They have not been objectified in the way Indian artists have been uh, objectifying uh, these these things and obviously that will that will have an impact on the people you know the especially the people who are not able to visit mecca who are not able to go so they see these images in a certain way and then they imagine mecca or medina to be like that very interesting shapes very very creative shapes because you know when an artist wants to create a, a new image you know every every year uh, or every few months, the publishers want a, a new kind of image, an innovation in the creation of uh, Mecca, Medina pictures. So they ask the artist, uh, do something new, do something innovative. So the artist will come up with, with all kinds of shapes. And uh, some a new kind of aesthetic is being created. Uh, of course, it has been affected by the calligraphy also, as you can see in this. So these forms are um, sort of calligraphy and architecture and and different uh, geometrical shapes that have been put together by this artist named Ramchander and published uh, by Bridge Basi. Again, more shapes. So the Indian uh, uh, shrines are very much there. So there is Baghdad Sharif, there is Baitul Muqaddas, which is in Jerusalem, and then there's Ajmer. Again, another interesting shape uh, being created. Almost every year you will find new, newer kind of shapes being created through these and uh, some of them remind you of a temple a hindu temple or or a kind of a you know a, a sort of a fantasy kind of a dreamy kind of a architectural motif which you don't really find in reality these are things that have been you know the artist mind you can you can actually read the artist mind how they are creating this picture on the right um, it's like a little ship or a boat with the head of a a peacock or a swan and on the boat or on the ship you have a shrine in, in the middle of the shrine you have Mecca Medina and then the boat is being carried the oars have also you know Quranic inscriptions so the big creativity the artist is artistic creativity and also the choice of the colors Sivakasi in Tamil Nadu the printing presses and the producers were actually using colors in very very rich uh, uh, rich colors and very attractive colors because they have to sell these images to people who, who can't really afford very expensive images. So they, they, they are also produced very cheaply and, and available in the market very inexpensively because people are going to buy them and, and put them up in their homes around the festival time. So as much uh, attraction, as much beautiful colors, uh, de uh, decoration you can put, they have been used in these images. Sometimes uh, some very innovative ideas. I mean, the whole idea of the sacrality, the you know, the sacredness of Mecca and Medina kind of gets lost because the images are being tossed around. Uh, they are being like, for example, these Eid greeting cards, you know, animals, uh, all sorts of uh, things which you might find uh, sort of sacrilegious, but they have been used and people have not really found any objections to these images. Uh, animals have been used, birds have been used, and uh, you can actually read the whole story. You know, like this uh, this uh, pigeon or a dove on the on the right hand. Uh, it's supposed to be carrying a letter to Mecca or Medina because there's a lot of devotional poetry um, in India, South Asia talks about these doves who are supposed to carry the message of the devotee to Medina that uh, he or she is unable to visit. So, you know, here is the message uh, to be taken with this dove. Now, of course, while I'm showing you all this throughout the 20th century, there is also the, the, the typical uh, images of landscape, the photographs of Mecca are also available parallel to, to those creative uh, artistic uh, creations. So you have images like this also photographs created, uh, you know, specially produced from Saudi Arabia that are coming and uh, some people would use them, uh, uh, you know, prefer to use them. Um, but uh, at the same time, the Indian sort of uh, interesting creativity is, is also available. 
you have uh, you know some artist would come up with this uh, idea of using the 99 uh, names of Allah and Muhammad and, and putting them into this kind of shape of Kaaba and, and a green dome. And then um, a large number of these images are also using this popular piety, the popular Muslim devotion uh, being expressed through uh, these beautiful women, beautiful looking women or children, babies praying, uh, looking towards, uh, towards Mecca. Uh, because, you know, an artist is always looking for new ideas, as I had mentioned earlier. So in order to find these ideas, in order to uh, make an image as attractive as possible so that it sells, they would put as much beauty, they would try to put as much beauty as possible. So you have pictures of uh, this kind with, uh, with this woman, uh, Muslim women, beautiful Muslim woman praying. Every uh, Every artist is finding their own kind of unique way of making a picture devotional as well as beautiful so that any Muslim home can uh, put them up in their walls. As I said, babies, you know, because every every Muslim home, they're also children growing up. And uh, pictures like this are actually a way to educate, a, a way to condition the children, you know, how to be a good Muslim, how to grow up as a good Muslim. You know, you have to pray, you have to look in a certain way. So there is a kind of a stereotype, a community stereotype also being created through these images. Because as I said that many of them are not being done by Muslim artists. There are some Hindu artists, Hindu publishers. So uh, they also are able to create a stereotype of the community through these images. So I don't know, maybe some Muslims like uh, this kind of images. They don't mind. They, they think that a Muslim has to look like this. So a child growing up would have to wear something like that. You know, you have to be like that. So those stereotypes are also being created through these kind of images. Uh, and of course, the uh, as I said, the conditioning about how to read Quran, you know, you have to every day in the morning, you have to read a Quran. An entire ecology, a visual ecology is being created through these images. And I'm specifically showing you these images, which are only about Mecca, Medina, and that popular piety being uh, uh, portrayed through these images. I'm not going into, there are many other Islamic images, of course, there is the whole Sufi shrine uh, uh, posters, which which is a different, uh, you know, I have many of those in my collection. There is calligraphy, the Sufi shrines, there are uh, many other kinds of images uh, which are produced uh, in South Asia. But here I'm focusing on how in the early part, uh, and throughout the 20th century, this uh, Mecca Medina became the central icons as objects of uh, devotion rather than as a, a place of pilgrimage. Uh, because as I said, uh, that large number of people, large number of Muslim, South Asian Muslims are not able to visit uh, Mecca. So for them, these images uh, play a big role. So I believe, and this is something that I would like to kind of conclude with, is that if you go to Saudi Arabia, for example, for pilgrimage, uh, for the local Arabs, uh, the Kaaba is just a, uh, a, I mean, it is called the house of God, Baitullah, but the, but the God doesn't live in, the, in that house. It's just supposed to be a marker. It is supposed to be a, a kind of a qibla um, um, or, a, or, a, or a marker to which you turn for prayers. Uh, you're not worshipping uh, Kaaba, you're not uh, venerating Kaaba. Uh, you're only supposed to uh, point towards it, it to pray. And the idea was that the entire Muslim Ummah, the, the entire Muslim community all over the world, wherever they are, they should turn, they should turn in one direction rather than in different directions. And this is the direction to which you should turn. But at the same time, be mindful that you are not worshipping, you are not venerating Kaaba, you are only turning you're, the entire Muslim community turning to one kind of Qibla. But what happens is that uh, when you see images of this kind, which have been beautified, which have been decorated, profusely decorated in South Asia, a certain kind of mind, you know, it's the same mindset which with which, let's say, uh, a Hindu devotee looks at a god or goddess. So for them, uh, any image of a deity is to be worshipped. Uh, there's almost a, a process of consecration for any image. So, but that consecration was not supposed to be 
there in Islam or amongst Muslim because you're not supposed to worship uh, the image of Mecca. But the way they have been depicted in India by these artists, and, and you know, I have studied uh, about three, four artists of the entire 20th century. Some of them I mentioned, for example, H.R. Raja. H.R. Raja, his full name is Hassan Raza Raja. And he's been doing both uh, Islamic and Hindu images. So there is H.R. Raja, there is uh, there is Rastogi, and there is Bal Krishna, there is Ram Chandran. These are the artists who've been very, very active throughout 20th century, starting from, let's say, 60s, 70s, 80s. And they have produced most of these images, which were mass produced and sold everywhere. And in fact, these publishers were taking the, uh, the feedback from the street level as to which images sell more. And then they were producing or, or doing newer kind of images. So I believe that these three, four artists or a few more, they have created an entire body of work which has affected the popular piety or devotion of the Muslims of South Asia to look at Mecca in a certain way. So as a result, when they go to Mecca, they see it as, a, as, a, as an object of devotion and they kiss it and then they hug it and then they, the cover of the Kaaba, they, they touch it, which is discouraged actually in Arabia. I mean, the police or the, or the people, the security in the, in the shrine of Mecca, they actually discourage you from doing that. They, they say that, look, this is not to be worshipped. This is not to be revered. You just come here and do your prayer, do your salah and go back. You're not supposed to uh, worship it like that. But South Asians have this very, very emotional attachment with the Kaaba. And I believe that these images have played uh, an important role in that, uh, in the creation of that attachment, in the creation of that emotional attachment to these, uh, to, to, to Kaaba. Um, and maybe if you had only those long shots, those wide panoramic images of Kaaba showing it as a town, that would not have created the kind of impact which these close-ups or these zoomed in uh, pictures have created. So this is what I, this is my proposition. And in fact, I'm, I'm open to ideas, open to questions about that. Uh, before I end this, let me just show you one very interesting last image, which you might find fascinating because we are talking about popular culture. Cinema is very important in that. And cinema also has uh, made an impact on the creation of, uh, of some of these images. So I'm going to uh, close here and uh, open for questions if there are any. In the Muslim tradition, the integration, the adoption, the adaptation of uh, also local people, local uh, traditions. So it's quite, uh, I mean, uh, like uh, if I, I see this image, I immediately think of this uh, boot festival on the temple. And that is nice to see that instead of uh, Hindu uh, god or goddesses, uh, we have the Mecca. So that's... Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. Those artists, yeah, those artists are really, uh, you know, first of all, they are local artists and they are doing uh, pictures for both Hindus and Muslims. So, I mean, they're using, uh, interusing the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the uh, icons uh, uh, you know, from one uh, religion to the other religion. So that's a, a very interesting kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, give and take between the two, between different religions happening. And it's all local culture. So all that is depicted in these images. So definitely you are right about this boat uh, festival and the, sh and, the, and the temples and how you can put, I mean, for example, in Pakistan, there is a deity uh, which is uh, revered by the Hindus of Pakistan, uh, Jule Lal. And Jule Lal is also revered by Muslims as a, as a Muslim uh, saint. And the Jule Lal actually sits on top of a fish which, which is floating in a water tank. And both Hindus and Muslims revere that. And they use uh, the picture of Jule Lal as a Muslim saint also. So Yusuf, we have two questions from the virtual room. So I will, uh, the first question is from our dear colleague uh, Nalini, which yes. is many thanks Yusuf for revisiting this excellent topic of never ending pre-disciplinary interest. Would you mind telling us something about the status of those artists, quote, square, square quote, we have been talking about in the South Asian art market and also about their quote unquote social status. Thanks a lot, Nalini. And the second question is from uh, Saptika. Thanks for the presentation, Yusuf. How has the advent of digital tools such as Photoshop 
influence production and evolution of imagery in the late 19th century and beyond. What shifts and trends can be observed in artistic representations, style, and storytelling techniques in response to the integration of digital technology in creating and manipulating visual content? Thank you. Okay. So I'll try to uh, reply to uh, Nalini's uh, question first about these artists. Uh, you can hear me? Uh, okay. So um, we can um, hear you. Yeah, okay. So the artists, you know, there's a whole long tradition uh, of, uh, of uh, sort of folk uh, and down to earth artists who have been involved in the production of these images by the industry. First of all, if you are familiar with Bengals, uh, the entire tradition of uh, uh, Pat artists or Patua artists, these are uh, there's an entire community of artists who are scroll uh, painters and scroll storytellers. They they tell stories using the scroll paintings, and they were involved right in the beginning uh, in creation of religious images. If you go to Calcutta, the Kali. Ghat uh, temple, uh, you know, just outside the temple, these these uh, artists are sitting, and they have a very interesting multi faith identity. You know, they they could be Hindu and Muslim together. Their names are also very similar, and they know the, um, the they know the mythology or the folklore of each religion, both Hindu and uh, Islamic uh, folklore, and uh, they they tell those stories and they talk about. Uh, uh, you know, they, 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 they make paintings like that. So that is one tradition. Uh, you can find that tradition probably in uh, Rajasthan also. Um, in Rajasthan, there are these painters who used to paint not only Hindu religious images, but also Islamic images. There are many images uh, of Mecca, Medina, which have been drawn by uh, Rajasthani artists. Whether they have been to Mecca or not, that is not very clear. So apart, and they have been used by publishers like Bridge Basi and uh, and and uh, others. So then you have the entire larger industry in which you have big publishers like uh, JB Khanna and company and others in Sivakasi. So they have been used. Uh, they have they are being they are being used. They they have been using artists who I call sort of national, uh, you know, at a national level. So these are artists like uh, HR Raja, uh, Hassan Raza Raja and uh, Bal Krishna and Ramakrishna and so on. Uh, and uh, Yogendra Rastogi, who was actually working under uh, Hassan Raza for some time. And, uh, um, you know, a lot of publishers actually don't give um, the names, they, they, they avoid giving the names of the artists. So the artists have to actually make, uh, you know, ensure that their name has been put in the in the painting. A lot of times you, you don't find a name. So somehow, I mean, you have to really read that image very carefully. In some corner, you will find that the signature of the artist or the name of the artist. Sometimes the, the name is there and you can't even read it properly. So they try to hide it somewhere. They, they want to make sure that their name is there. So that shows that there is a certain social order, there is a certain social hierarchy, and they probably come from a socially uh, lower uh, kind of class or, or caste, um, uh, you know, where uh, they have to really ensure that their name has been provided uh, in the picture. And, um, you know, many of the artists who were, who were active throughout 20th century, they are no more there. I mean, many of them, uh, who I found out, for example, P. P. Sardar is this artist, and also they keep their names kind of ambiguous. P. Sardar is a very ambiguous name. You don't know whether he's a Muslim or or a Hindu, because he's been doing pictures of both the religions. And P. Sardar is actually a Muslim guy. Similarly, H. R. Raja is a very ambiguous name. You don't know, but his name is Hassan Raza Raja. Only when he does a, a, a Islamic image, then he actually writes in Urdu Hassan Raza Raja. Um, so, uh, you know, it's a very delicate kind of a relationship between the, the artist and the publisher, and, and they have to make sure that their name has been provided. Now, as far as the other question, uh, you know, the digital tools, Photoshop, uh, etc. Of course, this is a new uh, kind of technology. Earlier, like before 20th, before 21st century, they were using literally the scissor and the paste uh, thing, you know, they were doing a lot of cut and paste. Even now they do it. 
but earlier it was a very crude way of uh, uh, reconstructing an image. Um, you know, the publisher cannot afford to uh, uh, commission an artist all the time. So sometimes they're using the older images and uh, sort of doing a, a cut and paste uh, thing. In fact, in Pakistan, I found that this, this cut and paste was very crude. I mean, they would literally take a scissor, cut out one portion from somewhere, cut out something from a magazine or some foreign, uh, uh, you know, book, and then put, paste uh, various images together to create uh, a religious image. So uh, they used to do that cut and paste, but now, um, because as I said, that many of the artists are no more there. So now they are doing a, a lot of digital uh, cut and paste also, the, and it's much finer, it's much more sophisticated uh, collage making. So there's a lot of that happening. And um, of course, I mean, today these images printed posters are used only in the rural India or by a certain class of people in urban India, not everywhere. So this, the whole industry is, is on the decline and uh, no new artwork is being commissioned to the artist. I think it's just the old artist's work, which has been re, uh, rehashed, redesigned and, and being brought out. Thank, thank you. So, you. so thank you very much for, to both of you. It was fantastic paper, really, we enjoyed them. Thank you, Zoe.